Hi everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I've got good news for you today, I've got better news for you today, and I have the best news for you today. So let us dive in and I will tell you everything. So we'll start here at the north side between the Svatova Kremina line. And here is only two main things that I want to talk to you about. The first things, and it's definitely going to be in blue because it's the Ukrainian activity, is that uh, Russians are reporting that Ukrainians are making progress towards Nizhnya Dovyanka, therefore setting them up to cut off Svatove from the supplies from the north and then maybe continue forward. That is thing number one. And then thing number two is Kremina. So with Kremina... For the last couple of days, there were reports there that armed forces of Ukraine have been advancing through the forest and that they were very, very close on Kremina. Well, today we got confirmation that they are pretty much already on the outskirts of the forests and the battles are essentially raging on the borders of Kremina. So with that said, the first good news for you is, as I can tell you, that with the battles around the forests, and now Ukrainians pushing towards Chivanopopika, Pishina, Zhitlivka and setting them up, we can say that pretty much the battle for Kremina has begun. We obviously will not see maybe full-scale full activity as we want, because uh, in my community tab I posted that the weather is still not super favorable to large-scale offensives. However, Ukrainians can still achieve certain things, and the fact that they were able to reach the city is pretty good because the reports was that all forests have been significantly mined. Uh, now, uh, additional note here is that around, oh, sorry, uh, that around Yakovlivka here is heavy battles are happening. So while Russians supposedly took it, it is still being contested by the Ukrainians. Bakhmut, I'm not going to go in details. I'm just going to tell you that Ukrainians have conducted additional counteroffensives and they improved their positions in Opetne and around the east side and like northeast side as well. So overall, Ukrainians have pushed Russians just a little bit. So Bakhmut is, is totally fine. And the second, the better news is, is actually not in Avdivka where the fights are still going on, but and not in Marinka but it's in Piski. So the latest reports suggest that Ukrainians have conducted a counter-offensive and they have retaken a certain parts of Piski village. We're not completely sure which parts, but we're going to see what's going to be reported in the coming days. But if Ukrainians did retake parts of Piski, well, <laughs> that's uh, not a very nice position for the Russians to be in because they fought for good seven and eight months to take over Piski. So that is that is uh, pretty much the, the good news of today. But I want to keep today kind of short because it's midweek and I want to actually uh, save some time and talk more about this Friday's live stream. Um, I want to make a live stream this Friday to do a charity for the support for Ukraine. So we'll see you, I guess, there. So with this uh, super short update, uh, I don't think I need to mention anything else as far as I remember, because the Zaporizhia frontline is more or less calm, obviously minus the artillery attacks and everything the rest is Ukraine is having a good time. Russians not having a good, good time. Bakhmut is obviously hot but we see that Ukrainians are improving their positions. The talk of the day is obviously the visit of the President Zelensky to United States. This is something that we just cannot escape. And whatever plans, whatever talking points I would like to discuss with you is completely irrelevant when we start talking about the visit to uh, Zelensky to the US. So first and foremost, uh, this is the, the whole day is a symbolic meeting. Like Zelensky coming back, from Ukraine to visit uh, US capital is by itself was already big. This is the first leader that Zelensky is visiting since the start of the war. He's the first time he's leaving Ukraine, period. And we definitely see that it's already making an impact. So the US has announced 1.85 billion 
support package for Ukraine, and it's a big one. Uh, besides a lot of really good stuff, the ammunition, the, the MRAPs, the Humvees, all the things that are really required, obviously the biggest thing is Patriot missile system. Now, Patriot is important, obviously, because it's an anti-ballistic missile system. For those of you that don't know, uh, there are different missiles that are fighting. There are uh, propelled rockets that are being shot, for example, for grad systems and so on. You know, it's ju they just fly and then just land. Then the other missiles are uh, cruise missiles that they are flying in the air. And usually, or sometimes, they can be shot down by air de Ukrainians, by the air de defense systems that Ukraine already having or like uh, sometimes even by um, machine gun. <laughs> if you haven't heard the story, I recommend you Googling it. So there is a, a serviceman in Ukrainian armed forces that were able to shot a cruise missile with his machine gun, uh, which is pretty crazy when you think about this. And then the third type of missiles that Russia is using is ballistic missiles, such as Ins Iskander. Ballistics because they're using ballistic trajectory, so they fly up, and then they speed up and fall down to their target. And intercepting those kind of missiles, Ukraine doesn't really have capable air defense systems to intercept those. It's a big problem because that would also mean that the ballistic missiles that Iran is trying to supply to Russia, and we know that the deal has been struck, so now we're expecting that these Iranian ballistic missiles are going to significantly improve Russian capabilities to strike targets inside Ukraine, making life miserable for many, many Ukrainians. With the Patriot missile system, the Patriot missile system is able to shut down ballistic missiles, which is amazing, just amazing present for all of the Ukrainians inside, because this is something that can only raise morale and raise the hope inside of society. But the second big aspect why Patriot is important is the symbolic one. Um, it's hard to probably for a lot of Westerners to understand why Patriot is so significant. And I'll try to explain to you a little bit. So imagine if you're living in, in some kind of a society, like your own city, your own town, and there is a thing that it's very common, common local, locally, like, for example, some kind of dish, cuisine, something that you've been doing for your whole life. And then at some point you move to some other country or you maybe m meet a person from that other country. And then you tell story about your life in the city. And then you mention that you've been doing something like this thing that you've been doing for your whole life. And the person is looking at you confused, thinking, why? What's what's such a big deal about like this? Like, what are you talking about? And then you're like, well, how you don't know? Like, this is an obvious thing. And the person says, like, no, sorry, I don't have any idea. It's the same situation that I'm gonna tell you about about the Patriot missiles. So, in the Russian information sphere, for over 30, 40 years, as I've heard, like pretty much ever since Patriot missiles have been introduced, I think it's even comes from the Soviet Union. The Patriot system was the the kind of the the same word as saying as NATO expansion. If we're talking with the Russian uh, vocabulary, it was basically identical to NATO uh, presence in the area. It is like if there is a Patriot missile system, big trouble. Like that means that that U.S. is controlling everything and we cannot do anything. It was a huge boogeyman. For as long as I can remember myself listening sometimes into that uh, Russian information uh, sphere uh, talking points. The Patriot missile system is synonymous with essentially the Western style civilization that is being protected by the Western style armies. If Ukraine, or it's like, sorry, by this point, it's not if. When Ukraine is going to get this missile system, and now it's only a logistics problem with a document signed. Russia is going to have its worst nightmare, maybe not so much for the military purpose, but for every single Russian, it's a statement that your boogeyman has come. 
every single Russian, believe me or not, knows about these news and they definitely know what a Patriot missile system is. Well, let's put it this way. They maybe not even know what it is or what it does or why is it for, but they are extremely, extremely wary of something like this being on their border. So that's why this is the best news. Thank you so much for watching today. A super short video today. I really want to save a lot of talking points and a lot of energy for this Friday. Come over. Big thanks to all of the patrons and supporters of this channel. Uh, you can feel free to support me as well. I'm donating at least 50% of the profits of the channel to Ukrainian military. But I would strongly advise that instead you will look in the first comment and see the links uh, for the trusted sources how you can support Ukraine, Ukrainian military and Ukrainian civil sector. Thank you so much. I see you next time. And Slava Ukraini!